First of all, what kind of radio are you listening to us on? You have a transistor radio or you have one of those big sound systems? I have one of those big sound systems. Good, okay. Can you turn the treble all the way down and put the bass all the way up? Take your speaker. You got a big speaker? Yes, I do. All right, lay it flat on the floor, and I want you to sort of straddle the speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the AV therapist. If you like space for speakers or have a partner that has not understood the benefits of larger speaker systems yet, <laughs> or simply lack the massive VAC skills I have accumulated, look, honey, your new speakers. I'd like. Well, if you still want the feel of big sound in your life, the Bukhart A10 may be just the thing you and your music has been lusting for. A solid chapter and decks have been made for you to be able to navigate this massive review and suck up all the golden nuggets we present here, including testimonies from the Silverback listening team, in-room measurements, a direct listening comparison to a 30,000 euro speaker system, now we're cooking. and taking the A10 to its absolute limit. Pretty impressive. You bet this is not your average speaker review, and after this, you will know all the pros and the cons of the A10. All I ask in return is for you to help me carrying the rucksack doing these reviews Please to help me with my rucksack. by joining the channel Patreon. Oh yeah, sure, why not? Like and subscribe to follow the channel. I donate all the proceeding from Patreon income the rest of the year to help the Sea Shepherd create awareness about marine life. Check the link in the description and hit the rucksack knowing that you will be supporting something greater for mankind than just my time. I try to answer all questions, but prioritize subscribe viewers and Patreons. So let's get back to these guys. Can a young loudspeaker company beat players with more than half a century of experience just by using their maybe more unrestricted, on the beat, uh, fresher thinking? Well. After hunting Bukhart for three years, including bullying their CEO in public, Let's settle this once and for all, run! A package violently arrived at the office with a letter. And it said, Mr. Sternholm, challenge accepted, sir. Sternholm Reviews has quickly become one of my favorite channels, so I wanted to write this letter by hand as a sign of my deepest respect. At the time, I simply could not spare a pair of A10s to a small time reviewer like you. Anyway, here's a pair. I also include some visor gear so you can explore the entire wireless Bukhart universe. Listen and weep. I remain yours in crayon. Kind regards, Mass Boko Bukhart Stephenson. P.S. Remember, reviewers have accidents all the time or something. Bukhart Audio clearly displays a 20th century mindset, developing products that really fits the desires of many music lovers today. By selling directly to the end user, they do what audio companies should offer, allowing customers to hear and test out the product in their own room. In short, if you can put up the money, Bukhart will put up with you. I don't think I can think of a better way to sell products worldwide to the instant gratification internet generation. The company offers a wide range of both passive and active speakers, as well as an integrated amplifier under its own name, becoming a real player in the new age of hi-fi, constantly evolving. Great ideas, for example, include upgrade kits for older speaker models, a nice gesture that happens to be also environmentally friendly. Everybody's a tree. I knew I'd do it. The A10 caught my eye as it sits in the super crowded segment of ever popular small two-way speakers, but offers atomic powers in comparison to most speakers out there in its size class, which we will demonstrate to you in this review.
To me, life of the little two-way started in the 80s with a speaker like the Dali 2 here, revolutionizing how much sound you could get for the money. In fact, it shares the same basic idea of being a true bookshelf speaker and two-way. But here the comparison brutally stops. We will take the 4,000 euro Bukhart A10 to the max and communicate our subjective experience about the sound. Here it can be a great idea to take note of the listener profiles to see if one of them is close to your own listening preferences. That's why we take the time to serve more than one opinion. The A10, short for 10-year anniversary, is the ultimate manifestation and celebration so far of the Bukhart concepts we see in their lineup. It's a very small and practical speaker. In fact, even more compact than the Dali 2 so brother I just showed you, that you by the way can hear me play with in this experiments video. The A10 is a sealed, active speaker with Visa wireless technology built in, and it features the revolutionary Purify 6.5 woofer that, through new innovations, radically betters the breakup distortion found in woofers when they're being pushed. The Purify woofer in the A10 is a variant of the type also utilized in the 20,000 euro Linkdorf Q100 speakers that I literally undressed here on the channel last year. Check that review that also contains some great advice on subwoofer integration and showcases the performance difference that subwoofers can make to a system. The tweeter here is a powerful 19mm aluminum dome tweeter type with extended top end range sitting in a huge waveguide. This can have its uh, pros and cons that we will cover in greater detail later. Active systems really have many benefits that uh, goes way beyond that of a traditional passive speaker as uh, using independent amplifiers, uh, one for each driver, allows for unprecedented control while reducing intermodulation distortion significantly as each amplifier only has to work on a part of the frequency band. That's a fully fledged bastard of a good bite. Second, the amplifiers can be perfectly matched with the drivers, allowing for extreme efficiency. The latest breed of digital amplification, so-called PowerDAX, delivers 150 watts for the woofer and 50 watts for the tweeter. When using digital signal processing, DSP for short, it opens possibilities for very flexible control. You can look at the DSP in the A10 as an advanced crossover, allowing the Bukhart engineers to tailor, optimize and control the sound in many different ways, or even reduce or enhance certain frequencies dynamically according to how loud you're playing. In practice, the speakers can't be pushed over their limits unless using a master tuning that allows for this. But it will translate around 106 dB in one meter, something yeah. like that. It's quite impressive. Pretty uniquely, they also add loudness contour control that compensate for our ears' lack of sensitivity to bass and treble at low volumes. I would love to know how they work as near field monitors. Are they possible desktop system material? There's so much bass still which normally falls away for us because of our non-linear hearing. It feels progressive, but it does feel unnatural hearing that much bass at such a low volume. So would that confuse you in a, if used as a studio monitor? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, <laughs> it would. But I guess you can bypass that loudness compensation. Which could cause problems if you were sitting and mixing and mastering, because um, you would be unsure if it was the speakers not delivering or if it was a mix. In the golden era of hi-fi in the 70s, many amplifiers had a button or even a adjustable control to compensate for this, adding more bass and treble at low playback volumes. 
Behold, in 2024, the A10 brings automatic loudness contour control to music lovers, simply built into current master tunings using the well-respected Fletcher Monson curve that compensate differently depending on the level. Smart. Strangely, LCC died out by the beginning of the 90s, where the age of digital totally changed the view of any unnecessary circuitry. As signal path purity suddenly became the only thing audiophiles worried about, thus removing all circuits and devices not deemed absolutely critical. Ironically, it also put really useful room-fixing tools like graphic equalizers out of business. Signal processing has come back in the form of room correction systems, where all this stuff can be carried out without adding any distortion inside the digital domain. For domestic use in your everyday life, LCC might be the greatest thing since sliced bread, allowing you to have a nice full sound even at low volume. An important aspect to understand about the room correction and EQ features you might have heard about in conjunction with these speakers in other reviews are that they require a preamp with the features built in. It's not a part of the DSP in the speaker itself that is working more as a digital crossover, like explained earlier. With speakers producing bass like these, room correction might be essential to get the best from them, especially if placed anywhere near a wall. So consider that when deciding on what preamp streamer solution to use. The wireless tech used in the speakers is called Visa. It's an uncompressed open standard for wireless speakers, giving you freedom in placing speakers where you want without worrying about speaker cables. Visa transmit audio uncompressed at 24-bit 96 kHz using the 5 kHz band and can support up to 8 channels in rooms up to about 30 times 30 feet with a solid transmission. In practice, I got a little less, uh, maybe due to this uh, room being filled with all kinds of gear and uh, wireless systems. The A10s can be used with any transmitter that uses the Visa standard, as well as being used with a balanced line connection. And boy, do I like that. Ah. <laughs> I experienced some dropouts, especially after just pairing the speakers, but it kind of disappears after a while, maybe. The speakers also offers a analog balanced input if the application or your ears requires it. How does it perform with the hub streaming versus XLR? I found the overall quality of the sound to be um, quite different, um, substantially better with cables. I found that there was a profound difference in the subjective sound experience from using the Platinum Hub or the Prima SC15 Mark II here, that is the sound hub uh, options offered currently. And even more when using the wired connection. I picked up on a feeling of more calmness in direct comparison, even though in theory the all-digital transmission end-to-end -end should offer the absolute purity and the Primar SC15 preamp should be of excellent quality. If the wireless connection is not paramount to you uh, placement-wise, I would suggest using them uh, with a cable. Ah. <laughs> Here's a product like the Eversolo DMP6 comes to mind. And here's what not to use it for currently. That just got added EQ features that could come in handy. Or how about a product like the Linkdorf TDI 1120, the naughty little brother to the 3400, offering world-class room correction, ease of use, and refined sound shaping features, just like the ones you find in the more expensive 3400 and even in the high-end Steinway Linkdorf systems. Both would partner well if using cables with the A10s. Ah. <laughs> Those options would still be able to work with the new Bukart Sub-10 subwoofer, if needs be. Oh, I see. Excellent. 
using the XLR, uh, line inputs is auto switching, and there's even a level matching attenuator function in three steps with plus minus 6 dB more or less gain, allowing you to adapt the input sensitivity to most standards. Setting up the wireless stuff was pretty easy, but I strongly recommend you to check out the excellent setup videos provided by Bukhart Audio to save yourself a huge amount of time. The little A10 is available in seven different finishes at the time of this video, but sometimes they also appear in what Bukhart calls unicorns, unique special limited editions. You can check those out on their website. Drivers can be covered by two little magnetic grills for protection, making the speakers look interestingly 60s noir film-like sexy to me. Bukhart also offers a good-looking but pretty light speaker stand for the optimal freestanding placement, shaped as a tripod, making the speaker appear sleek and modern to my eyes. When used wirelessly, they can be placed anywhere you have access to mains power and within range of the transmitter, of course. That's a big plus for placement options. I found that the stand is a smidge too low to place the A10 in the ideal height for me when seated uh, in the listening chair. They are clearly designed to match those you know, really low sofa things you have to crawl out of. Or, more likely, I may very well sit a bit too high due to having a fat ass. Enough details. I know you're dying to hear about the sound and subjective experiences of the listening team. <laughs> the A10 has such special properties that we decided early on to give it the full treatment, where we put the speakers through many different scenarios, short and long term. Impressively smooth at the top, with even pushing it hard. It doesn't get sharp or shouty. And so much bass for the size of them. Yeah, the impressive speaker. Studio engineer Tim Harris and our senior listener, Carsten, had a whole day of listening to music with the setup conducted by me. Did I say it? Can I call Kift when you to music? Personally, I've been spending a lot of time with the A10s to really get under the skin of them. The impressions has been very varied, and I have revised my subjective impressions several times, depending on how they were utilized. So how do we boil all that information down for you? Well, it's really not possible to reach a definitive conclusion. We really can't, as much of it is so dependent on how the speaker is placed and your listening position. Both metrics can really change the impression. On top of that, the sound experience is also affected by the whole concept of master tunings. It's pretty crazy that you can buy a speaker with a built-in personality disorder that changes depending on the tuning used and how loud you play. Bukhart tells us that more master tunings will be coming, made by different master tuning engineers, bringing new personality to the way the A10 sounds. It's uh, worth noting that the team members were actually tasked to evaluate four pairs of quite different compact speakers in each independent session. We used the speaker stand to achieve the best possible imaging and for flexibility, so this was the way uh, the team heard them. Modern technology, it trumps. Yeah, a bit laid back, sound, elevated heights. So let's go in depth on the first thing that really sets these speakers aside, the bass. Bass really makes music, the same way that the bottom makes the pizza. In case of the A10, it's safe to say that we never experienced a little speaker in this room with this level of very low-end bass output, no matter the size. If close to the back wall, it's almost mind-bending. In fact, so much that we thought the first pair we got was defective. I mean, look at this measurement. 
damn, son. We have never seen that extreme before with other speakers in the room uh, that uh, do have a well-known bump around 46 Hz, usually easily room corrected for, either by moving speakers further out in the room or used with a room correction system. After room correction, using the Prima SC15 Mark II and the wireless SendMic option, we got this. You can also use an iPhone for the measurement, but the Zen really gave us much better results. In comparison, using a system like Room Perfect resulted in this, as the system tries to preserve the sound of the speakers while compensating for the room. For context, this is how our reference floor standing speakers ends up looking after Room Perfect correction in the room. So yes, we got bass and we got plenty of it. A great thing, but there's something about the way this speaker interacts with the room bass-wise we have not really seen before that can be very well down to the way Bukhart measures the speaker. Yeah, as soon as the bass is corrected, uh, it's a really good sounding speaker, I really like it. Um, of course, uh, from the get-off, it's quite elevated in the bass somehow. We don't know why it has a big bump at 25 hertz. It really doesn't need that. It's just going to push, push the speaker over the cliff much faster. So taking care of that, we can also push the speakers maybe 340B more in the SPL region. So remember to use a good mic, not the iPhone, because that will not pick up below 30 hertz or something. To give you an idea of what the little ladies are actually capable of, let's move the A10s to the cinema wall of our living room here. This is both a crazy but equally interesting comparison, so listen for bass pressure and clarity as we push these a bit and showcase just how the A10 manages to deliver bass at different volumes. Let's start off on the m &K system. I walk the floor from nine to four, and in between I drink black coffee. Okay, so let's say we wanted nine, ten to be more. Uh, what happens then? Let's uh, hear the MNK system. play that loud, you don't need that much of a speaker anyway. And the Bukharts, they really deliver the sense of a very large speaker system <laughs> when placed like this in an ordinary living room. Amazing stuff. An extended version of that comparison will be available separately on the channel. This brings us to the hard part of any review, the criticism. Speakers are full of compromises that shapes the sound we hear and interact with our room in a gazillion ways, seriously affecting the sound to a much bigger degree than your next stream or DAC or turntable amplifier cartridge or cable. Speakers and rooms makes the biggest difference by far. 
Don't let anyone tell you differently. Good, good. You're fired. Being compared to three other pairs of speakers, let's hear what the team had to say about the subjective sound experience with their different preferences in mind. There is a lot of um, bottom end. For my personal preference, it was a bit annoying at times. I felt that there was too much. It took away um, some of the mid-range. It took away some of my focus on the other elements uh, and the different tracks. Um, and so I actually preferred cutting some of the low end out. The, the higher frequencies, uh, I felt it was um, a bit fatiguing. So I had that world off a bit, um, which I preferred. I felt like there was a lot of power behind the, the speakers. But again, I, it's, it's mainly the, the mid-range that I was missing. Um, they didn't fill the space as much with the mid-range. Yeah, impressive. Impressive. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I think it brings out the music quite good, quite yeah. well. I mean, again, if you're buying these speakers, you probably have a small room anyway, and you, the room will have much more impact of what you hear than, than these speakers. So I think they do a very good job, and I can't see why they shouldn't compete in this price range. Again, it's an active speaker, so you can uh, disregard your external amps. It works wireless and you have uh, possibilities of uh, room EQ and, I th and that's what brings the best out of the speaker. You have definitely to take care of the bass mm. issues. And when that's done, it's just sit down and enjoy and I don't think you can pick on the speaker at this price range. I think it delivers the goods. yeah they cope very nicely even with the harshness of the loud levels of playing a very busy, quite relatively harsh mid-tone mix. Uh, they never became shouty or, or too sharp, despite the high volume. I like them, they're a very competent set of speakers. I may not fall in love with them, sort of thing, but they're, they do a very good job, a very competent job. Maybe not the most exciting speakers in the world, but they're very, very good, especially for their size. Sometimes you get all the mistakes and, and stuff like that is what so what makes them something grab you more rather than being correct. Whereas these are, are very well balanced and linear, but maybe over time you'll, you'd appreciate the linearity more rather than clips will grab you at the minute, and, but maybe you might get tired of them. They, they showed some listening fatigue for me when I pushed them hard up in the highs. It became too much, too harsh. Whereas I can't imagine these being harsh. Almost the other way, they, they feel maybe slightly scooped out. The mid feels uh, very different from the low end, mm -hmm. um, for obvious reasons, but, but also in the fact that it doesn't feel as, uh, as natural. Then there's the imaging and off-axis performance. While larger waveguys offers advantages in the terms of directivity control and efficiency, they can also pose challenges related to imaging and room interaction that must be carefully addressed in the speaker design and crossover. Something I definitely noticed when used to a coaxial system like the Technics SBR1s or the Source Point 8 speakers that offers what feels like a more even and natural sounding off-axis response. Carsten here had a great session enjoying some old school heavy feeling a bit closed off on the A10 at low volumes, but when he went to his go-to test tracks that are more challenging and turned up the volume a bit, he really felt that the speaker and the dynamics and the sound stage came to life to a big degree. Og det er, det er jo det, der er så fedt. Det er jo det, der gør det her levende i forhold til det andet, hvor jeg sagde, at det bliver nok kedeligt i længden. Det her, det bliver ikke kedeligt, fordi at det føles mere levende og, og, og nærværende. I would be interested in uh, your impression of the soundstage, especially the vertical height of the image. 
we never got to a point where there were a magic holographic style soundstage in before us, but more a pretty wide feeling one uh, with limited depth and height to it. There's absolutely no doubt that the A10 is a speaker in a class of its own. It would take a revolutionizing woofer and a young, ballsy, fresh-thinking company to bring a very compact yet classic speaker to market with practical wireless features, mind-bending bass response at lower listening levels, and a fantastic flexibility enabled by using the full potential of a digital speaker design. The result might be the best performing speaker in the size category we have ever tested, and a speaker that neatly fits into the new generation of audiophiles. The listening team notes included a criticism of a mid-range that lacks a bit of presence, likely in the midst of uh, all that bass. The highs can feel a bit elevated, maybe as a result of that, but also very common if the vendor is hunting a very flat and correct response. Again, the sound shaping tools in the wireless streaming solutions can compensate. Another potential weak point was the sound staging. It was sometimes too wide and never experienced as three-dimensional, contrary to what other reviewers have said. We also found that the vertical ear height was very critical. When it comes to things like low-end extension and dynamics, the A10 is a beast beyond belief. You can blast your EDM or hip-hop tunes all day, and they really opens up when challenged with dynamics. It's simply genius, and would be something I would suggest my clients in search for a big-sounding small system. It's kind of hard to see any competition in sight, but a alternative would be the currently cheaper Dali Soundhop system with a pair of Dali Rubicon 2C speakers. This complete system is on sale for 3,000 euros. It's a very simple, no frills solution, meaning that there's absolutely no sound shaping, loudness contour compensation, or room corrections options uh, available. If you like experiments, check out the Experiments playlist. Boom! Yes, sir! For more speaker reviews, check the speaker's reviews playlist. Schmuck! And the awesome Dream Speaker reviews. Blam! And may I also suggest that you check out the Hi-Fi News and Quick Reviews episodes that contains all kinds of advice, ideas, including music suggestions, rants and interviews, and Hi-Fi Business News, also collected in a playlist here. Slam! Stand by for the pros, the cons, and the review score. And as always, do the clickety-clickety and consider supporting the efforts on Patreon. You will know everything if you check the link tree in the description that takes you to all things Journal Reviews. Thank you for watching to the end, and remember, everything will make sense when you just listen. Stream based performance for the size, great dynamics, squeeze a wireless connectivity, balance line input with level matching, neutral sound, loudness contour compensation, master tunings for preference, sealed and small, wireless systems with room correction, many finishes to choose from, can be placement critical, low end can be a handful to manage without room correction, mid range lack. Feels elevating, sound stage not that engaging. Wireless can exhibit issues. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stern home reviews in the house, you know it. It's the shiz nicks. Oh, yeah, check out that Petreon. Save the ocean, help the sea shepherd. Yeah, you don't stop. We break for nobody like that. Subscribe, that's what we like. Feed